Hey, what's up, Sasha? What's up, Heavenly? Good to see you, too. Congrats on getting tier one. You're actually the first person to redeem a tier, I think, in over a month. Um, again, I understand. We haven't really had that many new students come in for the last month because it's the summer and most people are out enjoying the summer, doing summertime stuff. Uh, but it was cool. I was like, oh, man, I haven't bought a gift card for someone in, like, a whole month. Did you like the charcuterie board you sent me on Instagram? No, sorry, let me check. Sorry. My, I've been so bad at reading Instagram the last couple of days. Uh, let me see what you sent me. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. You sent it to me yesterday. Yo, that's sick. Handcrafted. Oh, is that with the tape? Yeah, I need to buy a roll of that tape. Because I, I have one of these, um, these like, gold trays. They gave it to me from, uh, what's that company? Oh, man. Uh, they do, like, the gold blunt wraps. What's up, Sensation? Goldtrace.com. Goldtrace.com. No, no, no. It's, uh, man, I have one of these. One sec. Uh, gold, gold uh, wrapping papers, I think is what they're called. Yeah, but, like, for weed. <laughs> There we go. Shine, this company. Yeah. I am 21. Whatever. What? Join the gold. What we... Join the gold gang, dude. They're saying join the gold. This is a very interesting picture that they do. Um, they basically do, like, gold weed stuff. But my friend uh, used to be in the cannabis in industry, so he got a bunch of stuff for free. He got one of these for free. That's right. He got he, And he gave it to me. It was a, it was a gold ro rolling tray. I was like, oh, this is pretty sick. <laughs> yeah. I still have these. They're kind of fun. I don't really smoke weed, but it's it's fun every once in a while. If someone comes over and they're like, oh, do you have papers? I'm like, yeah, I have all these gold wrapping papers that I got from my friend. <laughs> I don't really use That's them. That's dope, but... literally. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> it's literally that. You know, my dad said that. He'd be like, smoking dope. I was like, isn't dope heroin? Dope isn't weed, right? Or is that like a difference in the it's generations? A... Um, It's probably a difference in uh country. We call it dope. Weed is called dope? We've always called it dope because we never had weed. We always had uh, hash. Hash. Oh, okay. I see. So, like, flour was called dope. Interesting. Well, no, no, no. Because it was, it was just dope generally because it's like, uh, how can I explain this? Looking at hash <laughs> almost looks identical to looking at heroin. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, I, yeah it's chasing the dragon type stuff. Yeah, I got you. I, I imagine you've probably never seen either of these things for real, but I mean, they I have, have a, a similar color. <laughs> I've seen everything. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, so have I up close and personal. <laughs> okay, apparently, dude, this company's doing this thing where they're they're giving out a bunch of what is it? Stashing thousands of dollars worth of gold products all the world. Two hundred and forty gold briefcases will be up for grabs, dude. What? <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, I need this. Oh, it's February fourth. Oh, oh two oh four. That makes sense. Twenty four. That's kind of cool. What's up, Laz? Heavenly says, I don't think I can do questions today. I got some weeding to do. Yeah, speaking of weed. That's dope. <laughs> He's got some <laughs> weeding to do. What's up, Jamarcus? How's it going, man? Haven't seen you in a while. What's cracking? How's, how's life? Leafs. Sorry. <sighs> Leafs. Lifes. Um, yeah, that's cool stuff. Tiger stripes. Tiger stripes? Uh, that's what See, they're that's, saying. That's a euphemism. <laughs> Tiger stripes is a unit. Really? Well, they say they have tiger stripes. Like, you can get, like, rolling papers that are, I guess, have a little bit of gold in it. It's like, like this is it. That That's, yeah, I remember this. Wow, these things are 50 bucks? I have a couple of these packs. Jesus. Oh, okay. Maybe they are actually gold, then. Uh, no, I think they are. No, I th no, it is. It's actually 24 karat. It is 24 karat gold rolling papers. Yeah, they're real. Yeah. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> yeah. But it, it's a lot, dude. That dude, fifty bucks. That's what. That's like, yeah, almost ten dollars. Uh. Oh no! The last gentleman says his fever spiked. Fuck! <laughs> I'm sorry, you got sick. Oh no. Well, you know what do they say? Starve a fever, uh, feed a cold. What is it again? What, what, what's the euphemism or the the thing we we talk about? I've never heard that before. You never heard that before? Oh, okay. Jamarcus says, my paper got accepted to the journal. Nice, congrats. Perfect. 
Nice. Nice, Jamarcus. Do you wanna do you wanna send us the link uh, to where it'll be so I can post it on the the Twitch? I think that'd be pretty cool, right? Nice, dude. Yeah, Jamarcus is in eighth grade and wrote a, a little research paper on, um, not a little research paper, it's actually quite a large research paper, on quantum mechanics. It was kind of a, it was a very cool, almost like an overview review paper, and he submitted it to a journal, and it got accepted. So that's super cool, man. Uh, Curio, curio.org. Okay, let's check that out, dude. Let's check it out. What's up, Jose? Good to see you too, man. See, I was about to ask how you read that, because I was saying, Curio? Curio. 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 I don't know. Journal. Academic journal. Well, okay. This is the... It's curioacademicjournal.com. This is what it is. Yes. Okay, cool. There you go. That's the link if anyone wants to check it out. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, dude. What's up, Josue? Yeah, good to see you, bro. Do you want to come up and say something, Josue? You got a question? You want to talk? You can just hang with us if you want to. That's cool, dude. Um, ooh, they're in Los Angeles. Maybe I can go get a paper copy of this, uh, Jamarcus. Yeah, I'm taking questions. Yeah, you got a DFEQ question? Yeah, throw it throw it in. It's a journal though, dude. That's cool, man. You got you got you got published. Being published in any journal is an accomplishment. Doesn't matter how big or small it is, you know? Unless it's archive, like anyone can get published in archive. Archive, you know, is Although my friend got denied from archive, actually. Oh yeah, you see Zach knows Zach knows Curio. Yeah, you the you the two eye pie, yeah. He says he knows Curio Jamarcus. Yeah, so Zach, one of our one of our students um, wrote a paper up on quantum mechanics. Um, or you don't? Oh, he just says nice. Okay. <laughs> so just pretend you do. Let's just pretend that you do know what it is. It looks legit. Uh, it, there's actually a funny thing um, about academic journals. You probably know about this, Zach, too, right? It's called uh, I think it's called H index, right? So it's how um, notable. A journal is basically how uh, presti prestigious, how hard it is to get published, and how many other people. Yeah, H index is way overrated. Yeah, so you can do this. You can go to you can go to Google Scholar. You can actually look up. So this is actually one of my friends. She has a pretty high H index, forty six. That's that's pretty nuts. Um, but I'm in here somewhere. Where's my profile? Can I see my profile? Where's my profile? There you go. I got an H index of four, baby. <laughs> But yes, here, if you want to see, uh, if the contact is in Gmail, it's predatory. Yeah, maybe. But there you go. That's my, that's my Google Scholar, um, page. So yeah, I, I've put out some papers, um, but you can see my glory days is probably earlier here. This is when I was like trying to just like get out of grad school. I'm just like, peace. <laughs> <laughs> if I had continued, I probably would have kept doing well. This was my... Uh, my advisor, not my advisor, my grad student, I call him like, he, he was like my physics brother, so he, he taught me everything, he, he's cool, H index of 15, and then this is my advisor, Troy Carter, he, I call him physics dad, uh, and yeah, he's got a pretty, look at that, 4,000 citations, almost 4,400 citations, and since 2019, 1,500, that means 1,500 different journals that have been published have referenced this guy's work as well, it's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, it's okay. We can look it up. Curio Adak Germer acceptance rate. Maybe this will tell us something. It's cool. It's it's still it's it's a nonprofit. Um, they say the accept the acceptance rate is only ten to fifteen percent. So that's still pretty pretty. It's a pretty high accomplishment, dude. Ten to fifteen percent is not it's not um not easy. You know, that's one in ten. This one says thirty five percent. I don't know. Whatever. It's cool. Congrats, dude. You ha you have a paper that you submitted. That's a great thing to put on your resume. Awesome. All right, Josue, did you post a uh, something in Help Tree Scott shots? Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. Uh, we'll do this first, and then uh, uh, in our spare time, we'll do some SAT questions, get you guys prepped for stuff. Um, it's too funny. I, 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 is OB streaming today? Or he, I think he does his course tomorrow, right? It's Mondays and Wednesdays? Because this is a Diffie Q question. It'd be kind of cool. Let's see if I can solve it. If I can't solve it, I might have to call up on OB. But... Um, Let's start the stream off, guys. All right. Welcome everyone, to Office Hours. My name is Dr. Girl with Sexual Education. The stream helps you with math homework, science homework. Nice. All sorts of fun stuff. We're doing SAT prep over the summer, getting you guys ready for the exam. And uh, we're still taking questions as well in all of sorts of subjects. So right now we have a question from... Um, yeah, Jose, he is. Yeah, the... The SJR elitism is very strong in academia. What's SJR? 
What's SGR stand for? <laughs> Here's your first midterm. Good skill to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he is doing that. So here, let me know, Josue. Can you see? Can you see that link to 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 DiffyQ with Obi? Like, or do you have to be a part of that server to see that link? Oh, SCI. Oh, oh, that's the journal rank. It's called SCR. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What's up, equity? But anyways, yeah. That's that's um yeah I I. Oh, you can see it? Okay, cool. Then, yeah, that's the Discord uh, where he's organizing the Diffy Q class. And actually, I'm sure... Is this an SAT question? Uh, no. <laughs> this is a lot harder than an SAT question. This is a, uh, this is a differential equations question. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I don't know if he's doing open questions. He might be. I, I'd have to, I, I forget. I'll, I'll let Obi tell me how his course is structured. But uh, I'm sure if you, you had something like this, he'd probably, probably go over it. But, anyways, let's try, let's try to solve it. I'll, I'll go for it. Um, dy dx is equal to x plus e to the x over y e to the x plus e to the x. Wow, a lot of e to the x going on here. Uh, I did see the Copa America and Euro Finals. Yeah, we were talking about those yesterday. Uh, Euro Finals were close, man. Dude, England almost had it, dude. Ugh, so close. It's not coming home this year. <laughs> um... Okay, cool. But we have an initial value. This is great. So they tell me when y is equal to zero. So, okay. It's never coming home. Uh-oh. Maybe not. Someone says, I had trouble with the integration part. Yeah. So, what I would like to do is separate this so that only e to the x stuff, only stuff with x is on one side and only stuff with y is on the other side. Uh, that would make this a separable differential equation. I'm not sure this one is separable. Actually, I don't think it is. Uh, let's see. If I cross multiply both sides, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it live with you guys here. We'll just see what happens. So we get y e to the x plus e to the x. Or maybe we do actually. This, actually, this might actually work. And then it's dx x plus e to the x. Oh, very cool. Yeah, but then I can pull out an e to the x, right? So then this is e to the x. And then this is going to be dy um, times y, or no, times, uh, 1 plus y, right? No, 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 I'm really fucking up, sorry. y plus 1? Yes. That's what I think it is. Okay, do we agree with that so far? Am I okay? I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay with this so far. Yeah? Alright, someone, someone smarter than me in math, tell me if I'm wrong, but, um, Okay. So, then the nice thing is, yeah, I can actually pull this e to the x over, which is great. We love that. Nice! Um, so now we just have dy, and then it's just y plus 1. Or here, I'm just going to write it this way. y plus 1 dy is equal to the integral of uh, x plus e to the x over e to the x dx, right? I think that's that's right so far, yeah. Did you get this far, Jose? I mean, this is an easy integral. We can do this one. That's not bad. This might get tricky. I'm thinking we're gonna have to do integration by parts. That's what kind of what I see is gonna happen here. All right, let's just see. Cause this, I'm gonna separate into two integrals. I'm gonna separate this as x e to the negative x dx plus the integral of just one dx, right? Because if I can just divide this by both things, do we agree with that, Hoseway, so far? Oh, you see where you messed up? Okay. All right, it's okay, dude. All right, so let's integrate. This is easy, right? This is y, this is y squared over 2 uh, plus y. And then we're going to put a plus c somewhere here. Uh, this is just going to be plus x. Cool. This uh, is integration by parts because I see something that I always know how to derive. I always know how to integrate, and I see something I'd like to get rid of. I'd like to get rid of that x. Okay, so let's pull this down. I'm going to say that uh, uh, u is I, – I know we hate the u's and v's. u is equal to x, so du is equal to dx. And then I'm going to say uh, dv is equal to e to the negative x dx, so v is going to equal negative e to the negative x. Right? We agree with that so far? I think so. 
Okay. So that's going to turn into uv. So that's negative x e to the negative x minus the integral of v du. So that's plus the integral of e to the negative x dx. But this is just negative e to the negative x, right? Okay, so I have... Go look at this. Okay, I'll, I'll, go, check, I'll go check it out. Trump or Biden? I don't know if I can do any more politics these days, dude. <laughs> I'm kind of done. Uh, okay, I think this is it, right? Yeah, that's it. Cool. Okay, and then we have... From this, we have plus x. And then here we have... Uh, y squared over 2 plus y. Oh, it's them, actually. Oh, okay. Okay, and then we need to put a plus c somewhere, right? So I can say just, like, plus c. Uh, what do they want? Find the explicit solutions. Okay. So, um... y of 0 equaling to 1, that means when x is 0, y must equal 1. Okay, so... When x equals 0, y must equal 1. That's like y of 0 is equal to 1, right? Okay, so let's just start plugging some shit in, right? So that's 1 half plus 1 equals... This all goes away. Uh, this becomes minus 1, right? Uh, plus 0 plus c. Okay, cool. So then... Uh, th this is 3 halves, and then plus 1 makes that 5 halves. So c is equal to 5 halves. Okay. So my solution is... Well, this is kind of ugly, honestly. Uh, I'm going to say this is y, and I'm going to say this is 1 half y plus 1. I don't know. Is equal to... Uh, let's just say e to the minus x. And that's going to be... Or I'm going to say negative e to the x. I'm going to say that's x plus 1. And then plus x plus 5 halves. I think this is the solution. I don't know if this is what's called like an explicit solution. I guess I could look this up, maybe? Is this what... This is where I... I need to take Obi's course, honestly. I really do. <laughs> Uh, so I need to reinforce my own ability to do differential equations. I've taught it before, actually. I've done it once. Um, yeah, you can, you can come to speak. Yeah, just uh, here. Well, I can invite you. You can always just request it, but there you go. Hello. What's up, Oswe? How's it going now? That's pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I'm you know chilling this summer. I'm glad. I'm glad we have some questions to do. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. So when it says explicit, it means that it needs it in terms of y. So like, oh. y equals. Oh, this sucks because y y is like y is combined in a couple things. <laughs> I think it's a little messy. It is messy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Let me see if I can find uh the solution to something similar to it, so I can see like what happens when this happens. Uh, e to the x over y. Dum bum 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 bum. Okay, let's see. I just want to see how someone else does this. Yeah, they integrate. Cool. Yeah, but then that's a single solution. I want something where it's like it's not it's not like it's not pretty. No, these are all pretty. Also easy. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Let me see. Ooh, 
Ooh, hmm. that's kind of weird. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, that's so gross. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay, but I'll show you how I think. I think it's supposed to be done. Uh, okay, so let's go to here. This part right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is going to be a quadratic, is what this will be. So oh, let, let's like expand this out, right? So this is one half y squared plus y, mm -hmm. right? Uh, plus y, sorry, and then plus, and then this is going to be e to the negative x, x plus 1, plus x, plus 5 halves, equals to 0. And then I believe what this is, is, right, this is ay squared plus by plus c is equal to 0, and then you throw this in a quadratic. So you say y is equal to negative b, right, plus or minus the square root. Of B squared minus 4AC. Oh, that's gross. It is so gross, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only gross because of this C part, right? Everything else is actually not that bad, right? Uh -huh. This is just negative 1, right? Plus or minus, right? This is 1 minus, uh, you know, 4 times a half is 2. And then this is the part that sucks. It's it's this. All over, yeah. all over just 1. Yeah. So maybe it's not that bad. I mean, okay, so y your answer really is, it's just negative one plus or minus the square root of one minus two C, where this whole thing here is just C. But I, I don't think you're supposed to simplify it past that point, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, and let's make sure that works. Does Y of zero equal one? Let's make sure Y of zero equals one. And I think it does, right? Because it's... T so this is negative 1 plus or minus... Uh, well, let's see. So what, hap what happens when, when this is all equal to... What, what, sorry, what happens when x is equal to 0? So this becomes 1 times 1. So that's 1, right? And 1 plus 5 halves becomes... Uh, uh, what is that? 7 halves? Then 7 halves times 2 becomes... 14 halves? But wait, then this is negative. Uh-oh. Ooh. -ooh. I'm mean, just seeing like what once we get to here, right? This this because this is y y of x at some point, right? Yeah. Um And so plugging in 0 should still get me 1, which I'm I'm guessing this whole thing here in order for this to but this says there's actually two solutions then. Uh, okay, maybe. All right, one sec, one sec. Let's see if we did something wrong here. Y squared plus one. So let me make sure I did that. One half plus one is three halves plus one. Uh huh. It's five halves. Five halves is equal to C. Yeah, okay, cool. But then 4AC. Uh, yeah, okay. Did I mess up the pulling out the minus sign here? Uh. No, that's okay. <clears throat> oh, 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 this needs to be a minus x. I fucked up. Okay. Yep. When I, when I pulled this all over, I made this plus. This should be, should be minus. This should be minus. Oopsies. That's where. Okay. That's the oopsies. Like something's wrong here. Good. There we go. That's what this is supposed to be. Okay. So now let's see. When I plug x is equal to 0, uh, this becomes 1 minus 0 minus 5 halves. So that's negative 3 halves. Right? 1 minus 3, 1 minus 5 halves. Um, and then it's, it's 1 mm -hmm. minus 2 times that. So it's 1 plus 3, which is 4. Square root of this is then 2, so it's negative 1 plus or minus 2. So that, that gets us one of the solutions, right? Because if neg negative 1 plus 2 would get me positive 1, which is what I need y of 0 to equal mm -hmm. to 1. Okay, so that does work. Oh, okay. It's interesting yeah. how it pulls out another solution, though, that's technically not correct, right? Because like negative? It, yeah, it, well, it also pulls out, right, y of 0 is also equal to negative 3. 
right? Uh-huh. Um, but maybe yeah. I don't know. This this is a little bit outside the scope of my knowledge. <laughs> where's the, where's where's my where's my where's my Diffy Q expert, dude? Where's Obi? Obi's not here. Oh, Zach's here. Zach, you know more Diffy Q than I do. <laughs> Am I doing this correctly, Zach? I'm curious. Uh, let me see if if uh, sometimes there's actually solutions to these things on the internet. We love that. Uh, scroll down a bit. Okay, cool. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, Zach's Zach's on it. So I just did integration by parts here. <laughs> Laz getting the bond coins. Wait for the coins to clear. And then this was uh, me using my initial, initial, initial bound, initial conditions, I guess, yeah. Because they say, uh, yeah, Y of zero is one. But complete the square on the left-hand side for something, oh, of closed form. Okay. Ah, I like, I like, okay, I like, I like, okay. So you would say I instead of doing the quadratic equation, uh, Zach, mm -hmm. you 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 would do the you would do completing the square. Yeah, completing the square is actually probably much easier than than this mess I made. But it should come out to be the same, right? He says they are the same. Yeah, but I is this correct then, Zach? Because it, even if I do, um, what is it like completing the square? Aren't I aren't I going to get two solutions? With the square root, I'm gonna get a plus minus regardless, yeah. And then do I I just pick the one that satisfies? But I, do I pick the one that satisfies the initial condition then? So in this case, I would pick I would pick the plus solution, and ignore the the minus solution. Yeah, cool. All right, awesome. Yeah. That's great. See, I feel I feel sometimes I feel like I have the right idea, but I don't have the confidence in myself to to really speak on some of these higher higher classes because. I like kind of barely pass them, <laughs> but yes. Okay, cool, awesome. Does that make sense there, uh, Jose? Yeah. That what was the other the other way to oh, do it? Was oh, it okay, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's show the other way to do it. Okay, so the other way to do it would be let's start from here. I think is where we want to do. Let me let me put it over here. Yeah, thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. Um, the other way to do it would be to, to be do completing the square on this part, right? So if we remember completing the square, you want to make sure that the coefficient in front of this is 1 to start off with, right? So I'm going to multiply everything through by 2 on the, the left and the right, okay? I'll show you. It'll make sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. So y squared plus 2y and then whatever, like all of this stuff is then going to be, become uh, – plus two times all this, right? And then two times zero doesn't do anything, right? Okay. Uh, so then what I do is I take half of this and I square it, right? So half of two y is, is one. Square it and then add it. So that's going to be uh, plus one squared, which means I also need a minus one squared, right? And then this just becomes y plus one squared. Is equal to all this, yeah? Good so far. I have to like remember my algebra. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. We have to remember. Yeah, you. This is why completing the square never leaves you. Dude. You have to always remember it. Yeah. In general, yeah, yeah. So in general, here I'll, I'll slow down. Sorry. Uh, we we agree we agree up to up to this point, right? That I I just multiplied everything here by yeah. two. Okay, cool. Yeah, like okay, so then looking at this part, let's just strictly look at this, all right? With completing the square, mm -hmm. what you always want to do is you want to take whatever this thing is, you want to divide it by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? Oh. And then we want to add that thing y squared. Out. Leave the y out. It's just plus 1 squared, okay? And then because I added 1 squared, I also need to subtract 1 squared because this is effectively adding 0 to the whole equation, right? I'm not changing anything. Because I added one and I subtracted one, okay? This ends up being a perfect square trinomial. If you have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, that's equal to a plus b squared. Do you see in this case okay. that a is equal to y, b is equal to 1, uh, b is equal to 1? Yeah. 
That's what completing the square does, is it forces this to become a perfect square trinomial. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so this, this then becomes y plus 1 squared, and then here we have all this garbage, which is, right? Yeah, this is uh, minus 1 plus 2 times all of this. Over here, I'll just move it all over. Uh, I'll move you down. Fine, come down. Okay, equal to zero. Yeah. So then the next step is to move. Okay, we're doing... Uh huh. I'm sorry. So I'm guessing like once you get that, then you can take, I guess, put y to the right side. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can put y to the right side. That's really cool. So you just take this and then just uh move it over here, right? But with a negative. Is that what we're saying there, Jose? Can you do that or? Yeah. I mean, because oh. this, was, this was all equal to zero, right? Oh. So. I tend to like leave this and move everything else over is what I like to do. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's just kind of like what I like to do. So I would move this all over. And so this would become y plus 1 squared is equal to, so minus 1 becomes plus 1. And then this becomes minus all of this. Right? Okay, yeah. That makes way more sense. And then square root both sides. Mm -hmm. So we get that y plus 1 is equal to the square root of all this, right? And then it just becomes y is equal to negative 1 plus or minus this whole thing. Oh, okay. Which you should see is the same thing as the quadratic equation. You see how this is 1 minus, and then it was like 2c? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we had here, right? Yeah, 1 minus 2c. And it was negative 1 plus or minus. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What the heck? Yeah, it works out. Yeah, oh, completing the square and 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 uh, I mean this is something you were supposed to have been taught in pre-calc when they went through like all the ways to solve quadratics, but teachers mm -hmm. not very often do a good job of connecting them to say that it's it's all basically the same shit, but it's uh -huh. and you'll get the same answers. It's just different ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, it's. I think I think I think mainly when when teachers um, go over completing the square, they don't use it to solve quadratics. They use it to like transfer something from standard form to vertex form. I think that's the only thing they really teach it for. But you can use completing the square to solve quadratics. It's actually very cool to do it like this. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make more sense? Yeah. I also went through like like the whole COVID thing, and then like it just confused a lot of stuff. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, believe me. Yeah, you're not alone, man. It's, I mean, that's the whole reason I started this Discord and this Twitch and this nonprofit and everything is because I saw personally, because um, I've been teaching privately for over a decade. I saw personally that once COVID hit, suddenly no one needed a tutor. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, what? No, Nobody needs a tutor now? What, did everyone just get smart because of COVID? I was like, no, everyone just started cheating because <laughs> it's all online. Yeah. <laughs> no one needs to actually learn. No one's getting taught. And then right after COVID ended, everyone was like, oh, shit. I didn't actually learn anything. <laughs> and then so I started getting flooded with requests. And I was like, okay, but not everyone can afford me. So let me go do this for free. So I'm going to say I'm guilty of that. I did just cheat. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's totally okay, dude. Everyone did. I mean, again, I, I don't ex – it's, it's – it's like if, if a dog, like, bites someone, you don't get mad at the dog. You get mad at the owner. You're like, you didn't train the dog correctly. So when people are like, oh, all these kids cheated during COVID, I'm like, don't get mad at the kids. The kids are just trying to optimize the best way to, to like, get good grades. I get mad at the teachers. <laughs> like, uh, which, to be honest, um, they didn't really have many options either um, because most of these teachers had never taught online. Um nor did they have the resources for it. Uh, I don't know. Like it, it was just a, it was all it was a whole fuck situation. So I yeah. don't know if anyone's really to blame, but you know, rather than wasting time trying to see like who's right and who's wrong, I'm like, let's fix the problem. And fixing the problems is you yeah. know exactly what you're doing right now. Yeah, just ask for yeah. some refreshers, and we'll we'll figure out the the little gaps that didn't get taught. Mm -hmm.
Wait, nice. can I also get a screenshot of the... Yeah, I'll get you both. Yeah, I'll get you yeah. both the... Both the things here. Are you taking a summer course right now for Diffy Q? Oh, yeah, I'm taking a lot of summer courses. Oh, you're taking a lot <laughs> taking of summer DVD courses. That's intense, because summer courses are fast, man. Um, I know oh, yeah. a student I'm teaching who's taking vector calculus. It's in six weeks. It's a six-week course. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, mine is like nine weeks. Okay, that's a little better. I think it's nine it's, or eight. It's still for Diffy Q. That's, that's, that's quite tough, honestly. So, Especially, you said you're taking multiple summer courses? Not just this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, what else are you taking? Yeah. I'm taking... Ape Math 301, which is like MATLAB. Introduction oh, okay. to MATLAB. Okay, that's fun at least. MATLAB's kind of like, cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool because like, it's like everything you learn from like what I'm learning from differential equations, how to add it into like coding and everything. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. How to use code to like analytically solve. Oh, sorry, not analytic numerically. You can numerically solve a lot of these things with MATLAB. Yeah. And then I'm also taking uh, Intro to Material Science Engineering, which oh, is pretty wow. cool. Okay. So I'm learning a bunch of graphs. And like learning models. about torsion, yeah, uh, yeah. Young's modulus. Yeah. yeah. Yep, okay. Young's modulus. Yeah. Young's modulus. That's cool. And then physics. And physics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Okay. Well, yeah, please, uh, the, please come by if you need help, dude. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, just recently learned the, uh, what's his name? Gauss's law or Gauss? Gauss's law. Gauss's, Gauss's law. law. Gauss yeah, Gauss's law. Yeah. yeah, Gauss's law. Yeah, he's British, isn't he? Sensation Gauss was he? Was he British? Given the name, I would have said German, but no. No, I think he's British. I think British is yeah. So that's an E and M class then, I think, for Jose, right? Gauss's law. That must be E and M. E and M physics or physics two. Yeah, physics oh, two. Friedrich yeah. Gauss. Oh, Gauss of Friedrich. He's got to be fucking German, no? <laughs> yeah, it was a German mathematician. Okay, and Gauss so was German. And so on, and so All right. And so on. I learned something today. <laughs> I should know that. Um, is he British? His name is Gauss. What do you think? I, I no. don't know. I just I think everyone who did something in physics is basically just fucking British or something at some point. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, mostly German. Germans were the better engineers. That's true. Well, that was the whole. That was the whole thing. If you watch the Oppenheimer movie, right, when the Nazis like split off, it's like, ooh, are you going team Nazi or team you know not Nazis? Because <laughs> uh, they had what well, they had Max Born. I think is who they got. Max Born was was their big one. Someone else. Uh, but you got no, 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 no. That the Germans got the Germans. Like so, when 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 World War Two split off, right? Physics, the physics community got kind of split, right? Some people got like grabbed up by the Allies, and some scientists got grabbed up by the Axis, and then they're like, okay, and then both of these teams are like racing against each other to develop the atom bomb first. Of course, we had like Einstein, so like we were goaded. <laughs> uh, but the Germans had some good people as well. I think they had they had Max Born. I think is who they had is the big one. I want to say. Who invented the V two rockets? Uh, V two rockets is oh we 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 scooped them after World War Two too. Oh man, von something. Von Braun. Von Braun, yeah, Werner von Braun. I think Werner von Braun made the V two. No. Yeah, and I think he w he had something to do with the atomic bomb as well, didn't he? Uh, he had a lot to do with NASA. He did rocket technology, and then we we picked him up for the space race, and he did a lot of things with NASA. Yeah, he was. A ch yeah. It's hilarious, dude. This guy was part. He was part of the Nazi party until 1945, and then I think right afterwards, like, and now you are the head of NASA. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, I don't Isn't know. Isn't it the, the Germans who were first uh, experimenting with rockets? Yes. Yeah, the Germ the Germans were. Yeah, the V two was the first. I think probably one of the first uh, military rockets, I guess. Yeah. And then they had some... They they, you go on. They were basically used to bomb the shit out of London. <laughs> yeah, the V2s were, yeah. <laughs> but they also had some really cool... They were the first ones to have jet turbines in their in their airplanes, right? Mm -hmm. oh, is that the airplane where, like, I think the British were really scared because it was, like, new? Yeah, so, yeah, the Messerschmitt 262, this was the, this was the one they, that actually got to see uh, uh, fighting and stuff. And, yeah, we, because imagine, you know, you have a propeller airplane, and now you're fighting against something with a jet turbine. It's, it's, it's orders of magnitude, you know, uh, faster. This is what they were scared about, which was, I think, the predecessor to what the B-2 became. But it was called the Horton HO-229. 
Uh, and they were they were coming up with this right as they were losing, basically. Uh, but it was a super cool. Um, yeah, this this is like the last remaining parts of it. I think that they found in like a warehouse or something. But the Germans, yeah, the Germans, Germans had some really cool tech. You know, they, they had some cool stuff. And yeah, had they you know not made so many dumb ideas with you know Russia and I don't know killing a bunch of people, like they probably would have done better. But also, I mean, we came in and just like trounced everything, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, you can't, you can't fight the whole world. <laughs> You can fight a lot of a continent. You can't fight the U.S. as well. I certainly think it was one to one until you joined in. I think it was one to one. Yeah, no, I think had the U.S. not stepped in on on World War Two, it probably would have been a coin toss, which is crazy. Well, we would have, to be honest, though, we would have won by attrition in the end. What does what does winning by attrition mean? Attrition, uh, you kill more of them than they kill of you. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess so. At the end of the day, well, Black Watch was a thing back in the Second World War, and you know, what, there's a reason Black they built that great big fucking wall. What's Black Watch? What's Black Watch? What? Black Watch is a Scottish regiment. Oh, okay. I kind of like this. There's a new vocab today. Yeah, we're learning some new vocab today. <laughs> also, a thing in uh in uh what what is this in Overwatch? Apparently, the Black Watch. Oh, that's cool. Oh, they got the Tartans. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, history's dope. Cool stuff. Um. But yeah, um, awesome. Um, if you have any other questions, dude, Hoseway, feel free, dude. Throw them in the chat, dude. We'll go through them. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do go through SAT questions with the rest of the crowd. You, um, uh, I do have another differential equation. Perfect. Yeah, throw it in. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm down. Right. Those that are watching are gonna get a, a little bit of an education on DiffEQ, which is cool. DiffEQ is actually not that much worse than calculus. It's it's like calculus, but learning the tricks to solve things using calculus. Calculus gives you like the toolbox, and then DiffEQ is kind of okay. Take the hammer and hit here. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about this this Black Watch Brigade though, dude. What? So what are these? Are these people just like crazy Scots that that the Germans would be like really afraid of? Sensation. For whatever reason, we're better fighters. I don't know why. I mean, it just I, is true. I mean, William Wallace was a scary man, you know, <laughs> and was not six foot two. Was he not? I saw his he'll sword. Have been, he'll have been five four. Oh man, he was a short lad. We are very short. I don't know why. William Wallace. Wait, do they have his height here? I'm curious. Spouse disputed. <laughs> Yes, but I saw him, yes, uh, at Edinburgh. I went to Edinburgh Castle. Yeah, that's cool. They have his sword. It's massive. Uh, ooh, okay. Here we go. Here's a question. Equity says, Gold, did you get a haircut? Uh, no, I'm just not wearing a hat today. Uh, my hat's in, like, the other room, and I forgot about it. I've had this, I've had this hair for a bit. It's whatever hair I have left on me. Yeah. I still have I still have my uh, what is it the I can't can't see this this stuff <laughs> the the mullet <laughs> okay let's see let's pull this up all right is this separable hmm interesting okay. I know you have to use the integrating factors. Integration. Yeah, you gotta use integrating factors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's the. Oh, I should know this. It's like it's like e to the integrating. Yes, Zach says it. Zach says integrating factors will be your friend. Okay. I gotta I gotta go relearn. This is why I should have watched Obi's thing yesterday, or Monday. Yeah, Monday. He was going over integrating factors. Oh man. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, I have I have a whole one sec. I think I have I think I have it in my Dropbox. One sec, it's like uh, Diffy Q. Yes, bless me, I've done this before. <laughs> this I did this when. Let's see, when did I do this? 
I did this in 2020, oh, 2020, so okay, four years ago. I had to teach a student DiffEQ, and I made this whole uh, review sheet for their final, which is basically all the different ways to solve differential equation questions. I'll give this to you too, man. This is actually kind of useful. You can second order, I'm guessing. Uh, yes, we do. we went up to second order. Let me. How do I how do I download this? Can I just like open this, please? Thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So let's see what I wrote. Uh, finding eigenvalues. Okay, that's not what we need. That's not it. Oh God. Yeah, my. Uh, yes, R R E F. Okay. Okay, solving with two real distinct eigenvalues. Okay, don't care about that. Uh, when eigenvalues are complex, this is what? what, what what's, where's where's this? Non-homogeneous linear systems. Okay, wow. Okay, I did this as well. Well, I have no clue what I'm doing here, <laughs> but apparently I did at some point. Okay, here we go. Undetermined coefficients. Okay, yes, I remember this. Uh, systems of ODEs. Yeah, I th is that what I was doing, Zach? I don't even know what I was doing, man. Take the, take the Lagrangian of both sides. Just Dis distribute the transform. Dude, Jesus, what am I doing here? Excuse me. Uh, okay. We need we need to chill. Operational tricks. Oh, Laplace transforms. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. And then convolutions. Sorry. I just want to see if I ever actually... Do. Oh, maybe it was Cauchy Euler? When you have differential where the powers of X match the derivative degree of Y. Oh, wow. That's even cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, this is different. Okay. Ordinary points, singular points. Bad. No, this is series. Let's see. Interesting. Man, I used to be so smart because I, I don't understand anything I wrote here. But okay, cool. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's a weird diff EQ class, just looking at that, because uh, that's that's not, this is what I would think is like, yeah, standard stuff, which is integrating factors. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we can multiply both sides by the differential equation by the integrating factor, which is divided as e to the px. Okay. Cool. So I need to get in this form, dy dx plus P of Y is equal to Q. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, we do. We kind of already have that, right? Except X is T, I guess. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. It's equal to Q. Okay. Uh, e to the PDX. Okay. And then, well, let me make sure I have this right. The derivative in this case is... Oh, so we just multiply by e to the 2. Do you, do you see that for integrating factors, um, Josue? Yeah. Right. Uh, the first thing I did on this was uh, I divided by t. You divided by t. So you get what? dy dt by itself. I don't know if that's the right Oh, I agree. I agree. That is probably useful. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I think we need, I do, I do think we need, we need it by itself. Uh, oh, because then P is a function of T. Okay, good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, let's start with that. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna relearn integrating factors with you today, which I think would be cool. <laughs> All right, yeah. So dy dt plus 2 over t times y is equal to the square root of 1 plus t over t squared, right? <laughs> and now our integrating factor is going to be e to the 2 over t D, dt, right? Yeah. Right, because it's it's whatever's whatever's in front of the it's a, whatever this is whatever the p is. Okay. Okay. Well, this is easy, right? Because the integral of uh, dt 
the one over one over t is ln of t. So this is e mm-hmm. to the two ln of t, which mm-hmm. is the same thing as e to the ln of t squared. So it's just just the same thing as t squared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So we multiply everything by t squared. All right. Let's see what happens. So t squared dy dt plus 2ty, oh, this is cute, is equal to the square root of 1 plus t. Yeah? I see how this works. Okay. So we know if I have, for instance, the derivative, let's say uh, ddt of ab, that's equal to da dt times b plus db dt times a. Do you remember the product rule for, for calculus? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, derivative of the first, right, times the second, plus the derivative of the second times the first. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So what I recognize here, right, Wait, this is pretty cool, um, is that the in this, rule. yeah, in this case, A is equal to Y, right? And then B is equal to T squared. Because look what I have. I have... Uh, da dt times b plus this is db dt right 2t is is the derivative of t squared which is db dt let me, maybe, let me show that yeah db dt is equal to 2t right mm-hmm. so this here is db and then this is a oh, okay cool so this whole thing right here, right? This whole thing right here is the same thing as DDT of AB. So this is the same as DDT of uh, YT squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Now, um, I can move this over. Oh, I want the whole thing over, please. Thank you. This is just dt, right? And if we just integrate d whatever, that just gets pulled out. Right? If I integrate dx, that just becomes x. If I integrate, I don't know, d flower, you know? Yeah, I just get flower. That doesn't really look like a flower, but whatever, you know. It. If you integrate the derivative of something, you just pull out the original thing. So this is just going to become yt it squared. Right. Yes, yeah, good. I mean, plus c, technically, right? And then we have to integrate this, uh, which is two thirds, um, one plus t to the three halves, I think. Yeah, because this is the same thing as the integral of one plus t to the one half dt. And I just say, like, 1 plus t is equal to u. So u to the 1 half becomes u to the 3 halves. And there's 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm making... There's a shortcut here I'm doing. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, mm. And I guess I just subtract... Pardon? Is there a plus C on the right side, too? So, technically, there is, but you can always consolidate this into a single plus C, is what you can do. Because they're constants, right? Because they're constants. You, you, can, you can just re... It's called renormalizing. You're just renormalizing what the constant is. Mm-hmm. Like, if I have this as, like, okay. plus 2 and then, like, plus 3, I can say, okay, this is effectively just plus 1 as a single thing. So, you can technically write it on either side. So, whatever. I could write it as plus C over here if I want. That doesn't matter. Um... Okay. I'm still going to solve for it. I think the interesting thing is the C is going to have a T squared in it. So now when I divide by T squared, right, I get Y is equal to 2 thirds, 1 plus T to the 3 halves, all over T squared, plus C over T squared, yeah? Yeah. But then they said Y of 0 is 1. Uh-oh. <laughs> I can't divide by 0! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yuck.
Okay, one sec. Let me let me just do it from here. Actually, I'm not gonna divide by t yet. I'm just I'm gonna just do it from here. Okay, I'm gonna solve for c. Y of zero is equal to one, so that means when t equals zero, y equals one. So this becomes zero is equal to two thirds one plus zero to the three halves plus c. One to three halves is just one third. Okay, c just equals negative two thirds. Yeah, what's up, Don? Got a raid from Don Does Math. Yes, what's up, my boy Don, dude? Shout out. Shout out to Don. What's up, Fembox? We're doing some differential equations. I had to relearn integrating factors today. I was like, where's where's my boy Obi? Where, where, where you at, Obi, dude? We need you. Not saying that's Obi, but. <laughs> I have a random button where, like, just some random video comes up. Oh, there we go. This one's pretty hard. This one goes hard, dude. <laughs> Don does raids. <laughs> I actually don't know who this guy is, but maybe one of the kids can tell me who this is. <laughs> it's like the most the most epic Diffy Q question ever solved. <laughs> Uh, Megalomorph says, I can't differentiate between all these math streamers and doing so is integral to my viewing experience. <laughs> Appreciate the puns there, Megalomorph. Yes, dude, awesome. Yeah, big shout out to all our fun math streamer friends. Yeah, go say hi to them. There's all their URLs. Um, and yeah, as I was telling um, Jose here, who we're working with, he's taking a DiffyQ class over the summer. Um, we also have some awesome courses being hosted by them. Obi's doing Diffy Q Mondays and Wednesdays. Penn Center's doing Complex Analysis Tuesday and Thursdays. That's after Diffy Q, Jose. You're probably going to take that after. Um, Complex I Analysis? Yeah. What, what are you in? Are you in engineering or what? What are you in? I forget. Yeah. It's, it's weird because, like, the department that, that like, teaching uh, differential equations, we're learning about complex numbers at the moment. Okay. Q. But you haven't, have you done, like, like integrals around poles and holes and all that stuff you don't know any of that no okay that i think will eventually come up but uh is that like linear algebra no linear algebra is different linear algebra is is matrices uh which is very useful for sure in uh engineering you use a lot of matrices to solve like uh simultaneous equations and stuff um but usually what happens is you take Diffy Q, and then you take linear algebra, and then you take complex. I think complex is the next in the series. Oh, I oh, it's, it's, yeah. Go on, go on, Jose. Oh, it's because uh, for us it's math two hundred seven, then math two hundred eight, and then we're done with math. Oh, you're done. Oh, okay. Well, you can always go further, dude. You don't have to quit. <laughs> Thanks, Lafaldi. Could always go for a minor. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, honestly, I, I almost did that. Uh, in my, in getting my physics degree, I was contemplating just getting a math minor as well. I think I only had to take one more course, which is real analysis, but I didn't really want to take real analysis. <laughs> Maybe if I had taken it with Zach, I would have had a better time. But I, I was kind of scarred from my complex analysis course that I I felt like I had reached the limit of my math abilities and I, I, I didn't want, really want to suffer anymore. So I, I, I pieced out after complex. <sighs> Usually Diffy Q, Lin Alge, and multivariable, then real, then complex. Oh, well, my school was all topsy-turvy, dude. Damn, dude. That's rough. Yeah, no, I I took complex bef before. I took, I took yeah, complex before real analysis. And, yeah, they, just, they hit it with us, like, right away, dude. Ours was, actually, it's very interesting. I took multivariable first. Then I took, I'd already tested out of all the calc one and two with, um... Uh, what was it with the AP exams? So we took multivariable first, then uh, I want to say Diffy Q, and then linear algebra, and then complex. Wow, real analysis was first for you guys, man. Real analysis was like the final boss for me. I I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> yes. What's up, Falcon? Good to see you. Heavenly. Yeah. Good. Back from weeding. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll do some questions. Uh, okay, does this make sense? Is this the right answer? Sorry, do we know what the right answer is for, for you, Jose? I feel like this is close. 1 plus t to the 3 halves, and then I think it's minus 1. 
I spent three hours after work helping the boss with a hot tub. Doesn't look like I missed much stream, though. <laughs> Should have done a hot tub stream. I like hot tub streams. We've had hot tub streams, like, in the past. A long, long time ago. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, okay, does this make sense, Hosway, to you so far? Or I think I think we're done. I think uh, this is yeah. it. Is this a solution? I'm pretty sure this is a solution. Uh, I'm not sure because these problems are from like my past midterm that I just took like a week ago. Oh, 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 it, oh! So you already took this test and you're wondering whether you got it right? Yeah, I was just figuring out where I messed up. Okay. Yeah. Do you, Do you think you do you think you see where you messed up here? I don't think. I'm, did you mess up? Oh yeah, I see where I messed up. Oh okay, cool. Nice. Okay. Uh, do you have any more? You have any more Diffy Q or physics stuff you want to go through? Um, no pressure if you don't. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do SAT questions with the kids. Not currently right now. I'm, I am going through uh, my homework, which is like sec reducible second differential. Like, reducible second order differential equations? Is that what it was? Reducible. Okay. Obi probably knows what that word yeah. means. Well, while you're doing it, uh, if you run into some problems, I'll be here for the next uh, 40 minutes. Next 40 minutes, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to throw a question up. Uh, we have we have some resident Diffy Q masters in the stream that could probably help you out. Oh, yeah. And I'm definitely going to check out their discords and their streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go check out their discords and everything. Yeah, Obi, Obi, Obi-Wan Pez is the one that's probably the most relevant to you because he's literally teaching a Diffy Q course this summer. Um, and he has a lot of materials, so like lecture notes, and you can watch all of his VODs. I, Obi, are all your VODs all up? I think they are. Let me find them. I think they are. Uh, I can't hear myself so many times. Nice. Oh, no. We're gonna get, we're gonna get Obi Wan, or is it, is it N Simplex? There it is. It's N Simplex, is what it's under. Sorry. Mm. Um,. But okay, yes. So he does have, um, he has all the broadcasts up. Oh, and it looks like he does office hours. Okay, this is cool actually. So, so Jose, wait. So he has his class on Monday and Wednesday, I believe, is when okay. he goes over like more of like a lecture style, and then he has other streams where you can ask questions about the homework that he's quote unquote assigning. But I'm sure he'd be fine with you asking other differential equation questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Ensemble Pachinko. Like, when are, like, the options for that? Let me see. Maybe he has it on his schedule. Sometimes he does. Uh, class time. Oh, here you go. Here they are. Okay. So, do, 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 do. So, I remember, yeah, so the, the differential equations class is Monday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific. So, that's four hours before now. Four hours before what whatever time is right now for you, um, and then mm -hmm. it looks it looks like he has office hours on Tuesday, uh, an hour later. So that's three hours before now, and that's on Tuesdays, I believe. And then he pushes into the highlight. Okay, very cool. Okay, and then there there's some there's some things. Great, awesome, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, good job, Jose. Hope that helped out, yeah? I also have a question. I remember What's up? you saying, like, you were giving, like, a good tip about, like, how to find research. And yes. I was wondering what the website was again. Oh, oh, uh, okay, that's a good question, yeah. You're in college, probably, yeah? You're in college, yeah? Yeah, going into my junior year. Okay, awesome, yeah. So what you want to look up is called Research Experiments for Undergraduates, which are called REUs. This is this is the main thing. So anybody else who's watching my stream, if you're if you're in college or in high school and you want to know how to get involved with research, uh, our government, the U.S. you know NSF National Science Foundation, has a ton of sponsored uh, internships that you can take over the summer. Usually, maybe they have some REUs during the year. Mainly they're during the summer. But yeah, so you, you if you wanted something, for instance, in material, well, here I'll just post the whole link. This is what it is. Okay, they're all starting at 1 p.m. Okay, Obi, good. Um, but for instance, yeah, if you wanted Jose to go into like materials research, right? Is that is that kind of like what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah, you can just click here, right? 
And then here are all the different um, REUs that are happening. And so they have, uh, so these are, these are the awards. So what happens is, and this is why professors get paid the big dollars, is they have to write up all these proposals to get grants, which is basically the, the, US, the government will pay these professors to host students for you to get experience with doing research. And usually your, your housing is paid for and you'd get a stipend as well. So it's like a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very cool. It's um, they're pretty competitive, but um, what usually helps is to have a professor at your college that knows you and will write a really good letter for you, and have them that be your letter of recommendation when applying to these things. Um, but yeah, you can click on any of these, I guess, or get signed up for free. Yeah, <laughs> we'll also take people for free. So, for instance, I don't know if you want to do material. If you wanted to do this, you can you can click this. Let's just see what happens. I'm just curious. I, I did the one at Princeton uh, back in college is what I did. But here you go. Yeah, cool. So here's a REU at Dartmouth um, for material science and they say how to apply. And then, so this year's already closed, but next year, yeah, I remember this, uh, it, around January, around the beginning of next year is when the window starts opening for, for applications. And so here you have just uh, mm. some basic information, you know, uh, a transcript, a resume, Two letters of rec. This is really the big thing that'll that'll get you into stuff. Uh, try to make friends with professors at your university, so that they can write you a nice letter. Um, mm -hmm. Any previous research experience? You don't have to have research experience. It's okay. A lot of these REUs are totally fine with you coming fresh out of the gate. Um, and then yeah, some nice little fluff letter about how you would appreciate working there. And yeah, and then you can you can pick what project you want. Look at all these look at all these projects. I got ten different projects here. Yeah, so it's very cool. So yeah, if anyone's looking for research for next summer, that's the that's probably one of the best ways to to find research that you'll get paid for. Uh, nothing in life is free. Do not use AI to write the letter for you. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> they can tell. Uh, there are also internships at various levels, including yes, NSA, NIST, NIH. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and I end something, whatever. There's a ton of government organizations that will also have opportunities for, for research. NSF is the biggest one for just science in general. Uh, if you wanted to do things in healthcare or uh, medical research, NIH is the big one for that. If you want to do cryptography, right, that's NSA uh, or like hacking stuff. That's fun. And then NIST, I think, is also engineering. That's National Institute of Standards and Tech, I think. They're in Colorado, NIST, N-I-S-T. Yeah. E, or National Institute of Standards and Technology. Oh, I thought it was in Colorado. Based on experience, as long as you have one letter from an academ academ academician, what, or academic person, whatever, or from a society fellow, I, is that a word? Acad academician. What? Academician is an actual word. Yeah. Academician. Yeah. Um, it's basically a, a main branch is near DC. Why do I think Colorado then? Don't know. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, well, NIST is also located apparently in Boulder. Uh, but yeah, they're they're a very big one. What's up, Jamarcus? Uh, uh, yeah. That's where they keep the atomic clocks. Oh, very cool. Okay. That's the one you know. <laughs> <laughs> in Pueblo, the West WWV broadcast from there, West West Virginia. What's like really really West Virginia? Yeah. But cool. Yeah. So check yeah, check those out. REUs are great. Um, the other one was called Suli. Here we go. Science Undergraduate Laboratory Internships. Here's another one. This is more DOE, so Department of Energy. So for me, this was applicable because I was in plasma physics research, which was a lot of um, energy stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But this is another one. So Suli, we used to always kind of, like Suli isn't as prestigious as REUs, but they're still both great. So, uh, and honestly, they're the same thing. It's you know, but this you can also apply for these. These are great. Suli Suli's are great. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Well, this looks like there's something for the spring that's due in October. Oh, okay. Application assistant workout. Oh okay. Well, these would be useful to go to as well. 
the here they have workshops on how to apply to SULI programs, which is basically the same as applying to, applying to REU programs. So these are also good things that if you just have time to go for, uh, would be useful uh, just to learn how to apply for things. Yeah, and this is DOE, which probably covers a lot of, there's probably some material science and DOE stuff at yeah, Department of Energy. Yeah. So here, I'll post the link to that as well if you want that. There you go. Or here, I'm posting them all in, but here, I'll post them here as well. I wonder why it's called Link. Like a web link? Why is it called a link? Just because generally the word. It connects. It connects things. It's a connector. Yeah, but most English is from Germanic, and the word links in German is... Means left. Left. Yes, yes. Links. It's just, drive, it's just a yeah. strange... <laughs> really, Rammstein... <laughs> yeah, I love Rammstein, dude. What? Rammstein's dope. That's dope! Alright. Of all the things you have to quote, Rammstein. I love Rammstein, dude. They're great. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Is that good, Josue? That, that helped you out, yeah? Any other questions? About life and everything? No? Alright. The answer is 42. The answer is 42. Here we go. Let's uh here let's 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 go back to our our SAT questions that we were doing, get some people to earn some points. Um, they keep singing "Du hast mich." Yeah, what does it mean? You hate me or you are me? It's a homophone, so it means you hate me, you have me. You hate yeah. me, you have me. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I saw them live for can the first. Hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, you good husband. I can hear you now. Oh, one sec. Let me make sure his mic's working. Yes, Jose, I can hear you. What's up? No? Maybe Discord. Like, Discord shat the bed. My audio's acting weird. All good. All good. All good. All good. You're good, dude. Technology is kind of a pain. Okay. Cool. All right. Um... Ooh, I like these. These are fun, actually. Okay, so the other thing we're doing this summer, in addition to helping out students with whatever questions they have in their classes, uh, is we're prepping for the SAT coming up in the fall. And doing that, I'm going through all of the math know? practice questions that they have and giving you guys opportunities to answer them and um, earn some points along the way. So here, let's, let's, get one of them. let's get one of them up. The swelling, oh, Messi's injury? Yeah, dude, his ankle did look gnarly, dog. Super gnarly. Gnarly is spelled with a G. No, yeah, yeah, it is G N A G N A. Gnarly, gnarly. The only reason I know that is because of the Super Mario World game. Really, Super Mario also has it as Nar Nar. <clears throat> In the Super Mario World game, the one that came out for the SNES, one of the special hidden levels was called Gnarly, and that's the only oh, reason okay. why I know that word. Oh, that's too funny. He got kicked in the ankle. Oh man, who kicked him in the ankle? I hope someone got a card for that. No. Oh, he just ran on it? Oh, damn. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So, how the... Uh, so, again, we finished up the last test yesterday. So, we're starting another practice test today, which means we're going to be at the beginning of the math section. So, some of these questions will be pretty easy in the beginning, which is okay. The important thing is to be able to get the answer right and to get it right quickly. So, um, we're going to teach some strategies for how to do that, what to look at, Um and you get to participate in this fun little game we have. The way that this is going to work, uh, thanks to the wonderful Enigma, shout out Enigma, oh, yeah. is he's built a quiz bot for us, which is pretty cool. Actually, ooh, let me reset the scores from yesterday. Let me do that first. One sec. Um, let's go to, uh, what is it, Enigma bot database. Enigma bot's a bot that a lot of uh, the math streamers here use. And okay, so if I do quiz reset, that should reset. Okay, cool. All the scores reset from yesterday. Great. Awesome. And now we're going to start the quiz. So, do this. Start quiz. Quiz is started. And so what you guys are going to see when the screen comes up is an example of an SAT math question. What you want to do is use dollar sign answer or dollar sign A followed by a space and then what your answer choice is. In this case, there are multiple choice, so just put A, B, C, or D. Okay. And uh, let's get started. Three, two, one, go.
Who got it first? I think Fembox got it first, maybe. Okay, good. <laughs> Obi's like, you got it, you're good. All right, let's close the quiz. Nice. Quiz closed. All right, yes. This is the first question of the SAT math section. It's gonna be easy. But you really wanna make sure you don't get this wrong. Uh, because if you get the first couple questions wrong on the SAT in the math section, you immediately cripple what your top score can be. They won't even show you like the higher level questions to get the high scores. Uh, but yeah, cool. So you wanna read these kinda carefully, but you also wanna get through them pretty quickly. All right, line graph shows percent of car sales. Uh, ooh, Falcon just barely missed it. Oh, it's okay. You'll get the next one. Next one, Falcon. I'll I'll keep it open for longer. This one was simple, so I wanted to keep it kind of kind of kind of quick. But anyways, uh, percentage of car sales over the different model years. For what model year is the percent of car sales the smallest? Right? Where is this thing the smallest? It's right here, and that happens in 2014. So yeah, the answer is C. Quiz features working great, Enigma. Thank you, dude. We just started the first question of today, but uh, it reset correctly. So here, we're gonna do this. So here, we're going to score quiz C, and then we're going to see how this, this grades the score. There you go. So Fembox got the first, first correct. And let's see. Let's see if it wants to put the grades in. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Look, there you go. So that's our scoreboard tallied up. So how the scoring works is if you answer... Sorry, let me put the full thing so you can see. If you at least answer a question, you get one point. If you answer it correctly, you get two points. And if you answer it correctly and you're first, you get three. So right now, that's Fembox. Fembox got the got it first. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Thanks again, Enigma. That's great. Okay. Let's do the next question. Ooh. I kind of like this one. This is a good one. And also, yeah, at the uh, at the end of every day, I put all the points into our own little scoreboard tally we have. We have a running tally for the summer in our Discord. Uh, if you're not a part of our Discord, you can join right there. It's easy. And at the end of the summer, August, August 16th, the top eight, top eight with the most amount of points from all these SAT questions we do, is going to get put into a uh, spinner wheel giveaway. We're going to give away... I think 200 bucks in like gift cards. So you want to try to get into top eight. Yeah. And the better you do, the better chance you have at picking the first highest prize. Yeah. Okay. So here, let's start the quiz. Quiz is started. All right. And it's coming up. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, Jeff's on it. Jeff's on it fast. <laughs> I do usually wear a hat. Yeah, I forgot my hat today. Or my hat's in the other room. <laughs> my thing got fucked. Glitched. Okay, good. <laughs> what happened to my hair? Yeah, no, I, I still have hair. It's just, yeah, it's just... I usually wear a hat. Yeah, I, th I still have some hair. Right. <laughs> Oh shit, the mullet. Oh, I've had the mullet for a while. I've had it for like a year. But I usually always wear a hat so you guys don't see it. You got a Yorkshire flat cap today because my son said he needed one and I've always wanted one anyways. Oh, nice. Do you have a Yorkshire flat cap uh, sensation? That sounds like something, something British, right? It's Yorkshire specifically, uh, and no, I don't have a whippet either. A whippet? Whippets for me is like that, that's like greyhound. Oh, oh, it's a greyhound. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh, that's a type of dog. One second, let me find the Yorkshire flat cap. I want to see what this is. Oh, these Whatever are dope. Yeah, got, but I've got not whippet. <laughs> yeah, I know these. Yeah, 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 yeah. These can get expensive though, man. I've seen some of these be like three hundred, four hundred dollars. Like, what's they're called whippet caps? No, I'm. I'm Yorkshire men tend to have a flat cap and a whippet. 
Is this like Peaky Blinder? Under, under the right arm. <laughs> it sounds like like Pe Peaky Blinders or something. What's up, Zach? That's dope. So there's two things that's true about Yorkshire. It's very, very rural and uh, very poor. So their caps need to be kind of cheap, I would hope, right? <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, there's there's still like actual markets everywhere, and they're sold for like a couple of quid. So. I was seeing somewhere that some of these hats are like a hundred quid or something, or, like two hundred quid. I was like, what? Excuse me. Ma! What? That's a lot of money for a hat. <laughs> well, that was probably true when Burberry was a big thing. Oh, Burberry. There you go. I do like their trenches. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, for a particular machine that produces beads, 29 out of every 100 have a defect. A bead produced by the machine will be selected at random. What is the probability that it has a defect? Yeah, cool. Um, right. Yeah, so probability, right, is always just the number of, like, occurrences that I, I call, like, a success. In this case, failure is a success. I don't know. Um, divided by the number of total possible occurrences. That's how I, I, I think of probability, right? Well, there are occurrences. I can't spell occurrences today. Uh, so, yeah. So, 29 out of 100. That would be, like, the probability. So, selecting a bead that has a defect would also be 29 over 100. If they ask what's the probability of selecting a bead that does not have a defect, okay? The important thing uh, to, to know here, it's just a little bit of extra, extra information, is that the probability of something happening at all um, whether it's defected or not not defected has to be one. So, if the probability of a defect is twenty nine of a hundred, then not having a defect would have to be seventy one over a hundred, because these together add up to a hundred over a hundred, which is one. There has to be a hundred percent probability of something happening. So it's either defective or it's not defective. Failure is a, is a success. Okay, George Orwell. <laughs> If you pick a random number between three and four, what's the chance that it will be pie? No, dude, what? You blowing us out, dude, what? Oh, man, dude. Has to be discreet. <laughs> or, or that's irrational. Okay. So, yeah, correct answer is... I'm surprised you didn't ask me, like, on a spherical shell of some sorts what, what it would be. <laughs> Score quiz. Answer C. Jeff got it first. Nice, good job. And let's see. Probably got the scores updated. Yeah, nice. And there you go. Yep, we got more scores going up. Okay, cool. So Fembox still in the lead right now. Jeff at three, though. We're getting close. I'm giving up on spheres for a while. I just don't have the balls. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fucking good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I love the puns, dude. The puns are great. All right. Is Penn Center streaming today? I gotta leave in the next 20 minutes, but I'll probably rate. I think Penn Center has a class today, yeah? Or are you starting one right now? What is the problem? <laughs> Pen is live? Okay, cool. All right, well, well, we'll do a couple more of these, and then we'll go raid Pen Center. Okay. All right. Yeah, I thought he, I thought he started at 6. I thought, I thought he starts in an hour. Okay, quiz started. This looks like it's going to be... A little throwback to some geometry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bye, Jeff. Let the peasants win today. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Let the peasants win today. Let the Wookiee win. Oh, someone, someone's running distractions by putting coins on the, on the, on the screen. <laughs> wow. No, it's okay. Good. All right, cool. All right, let's close the quiz. Good job, Heavenly. Yep. Right in the nick of time. Quiz closed. Okay. Another common problem they love to do on the SAT, transversals. Anytime you have uh, two lines that are parallel and you see something that's crossing it, 
It's good to remember our transversal rules. I always like to just as a little refresher for people who maybe been a bit since they did geometry. I always like to look at stuff like this. I put like two boxes. And I say like this is box one, this is box two, this is box three, this is box four. And then this is box one, box two, box three, and box four. And I always know that the numbers are the same. Like they're corresponding. Like whatever one is here, one will be here. In this case, whatever four is, four will be here. And whatever three is here, three will be here. Oh, he is literally just starting right now? Oh, he's early. Wait, what did he say? He didn't say... He did he make an announcement for that? One sec, let me see. And whatever one is, three will be. Yeah. Okay, I guess he's early. All right, whatever. Um, I'll do. I'll do one more question after this, and then we'll go raid Pencer. Uh, so yes, yeah, so whatever three is here, three will be the same here. So this is going to end up being thirty-three degrees. Actually, quite convenient there, right? The box three became thirty-three degrees, and then this right here, guys, is a line. Right, we got a nice line here, and we know that the total angle in a line, I think these are called collinear angles, uh, has to be 180. So, X plus 33 must be equal to 180, and I think Jamarcus did get this right first, right? Subtract the 33, subtract the 33, and you're going to get uh, 147. Yeah, answer choice D, nice. Can you calculate yeah, tree? How did you do it? Yeah, show, show sensation, how did you do it? Um, if you said three and three is the same, correct. But, um, opposite angles are the same as well, so the oh, angles okay. pointing at each other are also the same. So, if I knew that that one was thirty-three, then it's opposite angle near M, pointing down from. Oh, M. this one right here, or or this also, one was also thirty-three. Uh, ah, the, the the former. Oh, the former one. So this one right here. You say this one was thirty-three. And any set of angles on a line is obviously one hundred eighty degrees. Good. So. Yeah, yeah, that works as well. Your lag is streaming behind for me. People were answering questions before they were even shown the screen for me. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Maybe, maybe it's because you're in Mountain Town. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep the questions quiz open for a little bit more. I'm watching on DC too, or on Discord. Oh, it's on Discord. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, so some people are watching the stream on Discord, which will definitely be five seconds ahead, and then they're typing the chat in. Oh, that's funny. Oh, ha <laughs> Oh, there's. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be streaming it on Discord then. <laughs> Listen on Discord, then just type in, just type on Twitch. Yeah, wow. See, the kids always they find ways to, to and not cheat the system, but yeah, to get the advantage. Yeah, so you're right, uh, sensation. This this is called we say opposite exterior angles because these are on the exterior of the transversal. They're on the outside, and then they're opposite sides. Like this is on one side of the transversal, and this is on the other side of the transversal. That's another one. Yeah. He is the transversal. Uh, T is the transversal, correct. Okay. Sorry, 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 op sorry, sorry. Opposite ends, uh, sorry. Outside of the parallel lines, opposite sides of the transversal. That's what I meant to say, yeah. Obviously, some of these terms are foreign to me, so I'm just checking. Yeah, no, you're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's good to know. Okay, cool. Score quiz. We're going to go with D for that one. Jamarcus got it first. No, so they kind of simplify it all for the rest of us. <laughs> Well, they probably give you like some some different names for things, yeah. Well, they just use simpler terms like opposite angles and. <laughs> yeah, opposite this. Yeah, we say corresponding is what we say. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh... Like, doesn't corresponding mean? Means like the same. Together though. Yeah, yeah. Linked. Well, in in my example, right? I the reason why I call it, I think it's it's because it's it's the same part of the tr of the of the square. This corresponds to this. This corresponds to this. That's why we call them corresponding uh, angles. It's yeah. like it's the same. It's the same quadrant. Is is kind of I think what we think of it as. Yeah, my root for the word correspondence is letters. Oh, I see. Or like letters of correspondence. You you send somebody correspondence. You correspond. Oh with somebody. yeah, and corresponding. So oh, I see. I see. Yeah. English is hard sometimes. Remember, dude. English English is not my first language. I'm I've just had a lot of practice. <laughs> What's your first language? Scottish. Gaelic. Gaelic. Which, or Gaelic? Is um, it, is no, th that's two different things. So there's Irish and there's Scottish. Irish is Gaelic, Scottish is Gaelic. Um, oh, they're almost identical, the e. but not quite. Oh, interesting. No, no, no th there, are grammatical, there, are, there are grammatical and spelling differences. Oh, interesting. Okay. They're but, not but, identical languages, but they're but very, they, very similar. But they have like the same root, maybe, right? Uh, yeah, Celtic. <laughs> Celtic. There we go. Aye. 
Similar to, um, but legally distinct from. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. I I have to make. Okay. I I I'm gonna turn off the Twit the the Discord stream so that uh so that uh so that the yeah, Jamarcus can't cheat on this one. All right. But here we go. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I turned it on. <laughs> no. Maybe I'll turn it back on. Let's see, because I do agree. Maybe we should give the students a little bit of a, a head start versus the the really smart math streamers as well, who are probably not in the Discord but just watching on Twitch. Well, that's a, it's an interesting idea. Interesting idea, because I know most of the students are probably watching on 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 Discord. But I already yeah, saw I the need, graph, uh, so this should. Be I need easy. the helping hand as well because I'm special. Okay, there we go. All right, I'll turn it back on. I'll turn it back on. Okay. I demand justice into the harbor. What is this? Like the 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 the, the Boston Tea Party or something? I don't even like tea. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. Three. Oh, wait. Did I start the quiz yet? No, I got to start it. One sec. I need to just map this to a, a macro on my uh, on my stream deck. Okay. Three, two, one, go. I can't even work this out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to get the right answer, like which is good. It's good. Where's the wine design? Oh, um, no, I thought I had it. No, I don't. It's okay. Think about it. Y intercept is where X is equal to zero. X intercept is where Y is equal to zero. Marcus says I got an ad. Ah! <laughs> Oh, Laz is cracking up, dude. Okay, I got it now. Got it? Nice. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right, let's close the quiz. Does everybody <laughs> have it, though? Go ask me. Yeah, let's see. Let's see who got it right. Okay. So, good. Uh, Y intercept. Yep. They, they, they love to put one of these on the SAT. Always. They love putting, like, an intercept question. Just be careful choosing, like, which one they're asking. This one's easy, because this one doesn't have an x-intercept, because it never really crosses the x-axis, from what I see so far. Uh, <laughs> revolt. The peasants demand more bread. Uh, so the y-intercept, yep, that's always... So y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. So we just look at our graph. When x is equal to zero, we're right here, right? And so that is going to intersect our graph here at 8. So that is going to be 0, 0,8, right? Which is choice D. Interesting they didn't put an 8, 0. I would have done that to mess with people. I don't know why they put a negative 8. Like, negative 8 doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Viva la France. It was Bastille Day on Sunday. It was. What a weird thing to celebrate. Yeah, what are they celebrating, actually, sorry, with Bastille Day? The storming of the Bastille. So that's when, like, the, the peasants, like, started... Eating the rich? Is that what Bastille Day is? Uh, I can't remember. Was it Robespierre uh, invaded the... Uh... Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Obi says, let them differentiate. <laughs> let them eat brioche. I le we learned about this earlier, right? It's not let them eat cake. It's let them eat bread, right? Or like yeah, cake bread. It's a weird sort of translation. Bready cake. Ooh. All right. Here, this will be the last question. Uh, cause then I gotta go teach another student and Penn Center is doing his complex analysis class. So we'll go say hi to Penn Center. Cannibalism for <laughs> all right, here we go. Quiz starting. I, I'm curious to yeah, see who can get this one right first. All right. You guys ready for it? Three, two, one, go. It's a good one. This one takes a little bit, of, a little bit of mental math. Yeah. All right, let's get down there. Okay. Wait for Falcon. 
Falcon, you got an answer for this one? I know you're, you You said the, the stream was lagging like five, ten seconds for you. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, let's go this, through this one. Okay. So it says total cost, in to total cost in dollars to lease a car for 36 months from a particular dealership is given by this, where X is the monthly payment. That's nice. Uh, it doesn't change. Don't, don't monthly payments usually change? Because, like, as you pay it off, you owe less or something? Is that... I, I don't know. At least in the U.S. We, we love loans. We love loans and debt. <laughs> I, I don't know how that works in the U.K. Do they, have, do they have payment plans in the U.K. for cars? Like, do you have to buy your car in cash? Or do you get, like, a loan for it? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I know, I know. Must to exist. It's too expensive. <laughs> financing is too expensive, or or or. No, I, just, or I just mean it, it, Finance must exist because it would okay. be too expensive. Otherwise, I agree. So, uh, yeah, not when it's amor amortized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that word? Amor amortization or something? Yeah, that's when it, it's baked in, right? It's baked into it. Yeah, you calculate ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I know what happens, but okay. But as you're paying it off, the percentage of your monthly payment that goes towards the principal versus what goes towards the interest changes. I think that's what happens. Like in the beginning, you're paying off all the interest, and then towards the end, you end up paying off more of the principal. Yes. Okay. That's okay. All right. Yeah. The payment, the, the amount doesn't change. The percentage does. Uh. Okay. Cool. So yeah, they say okay. What's the total cost to lease a car when this is it? So they tell us the cost right here, f of x. So if you're reading this quickly and you just want to get the answer fast, just start looking for the buzzwords. They're looking for what is total cost. Total cost is f of x. f of x is this. So I'm like, okay, cool. 36x plus 1,000. I'm just, I'm trying to like visualize what like my thought process is, where I'm jumping around. Um, and then I know, okay, x is the monthly payment. Monthly payment is 400. So that tells me x is 400. Now we just plug it right in. Okay. So it's 36 times 400 plus 1,000. All right. And when doing this, again, you can take a calculator out. It's going to cost you time, precious seconds that you want for later questions. So I would learn how to do this in your head, which the way I do this is I'm going to do 3 times 400 and then add, like, another 0 to it. Um, and then I'm going to do 6 times 400. So really I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do 30 times 400, and then I'm going to do 6 times 400. And the cool thing with the zeros, when you're multiplying, is you can put them wherever. So I, I, could, I, could, I could put the zero, instead of 30 times 400, I can say that's the same as 3 times 4,000. And that's going to be 12,000. And then 6 times 400, that's the same as 6 times 4, which is 24, plus another two zeros. So that's going to be 2,400. Okay? So now we add these up. This is going to get me 1,440. And then plus another 1,000 is going to get me the uh, 15,400. 15,400. So, yeah. Answer is going to be C there. Again, these are just like the quick math tricks. I also kind of see like 4 times 36. That's the same thing as 4 times 3 times 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 12 is 144. So, that's another trick you can maybe see in your head there. If you see like 4 times 36, instantly you're like, okay, it's 14-something. And then we're putting another 1,000 on top. They actually all have 400s in them, right? This has a 400, this has a 400, this has a 400 in it. Um, so, yeah, you do have to be kind of, like, tricky. You have to be a little bit careful. Like, if I saw things that weren't zeros at the end, then I would know to just mark those off right away. But, yeah, answer is, is C. Okay, cool. All right, nice. Good job. Score quiz. C. Or I got to close the quiz first. Sorry, close. Calculator said that 36 times 4 is 144, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Laz got it first. Okay, good. Congrats, dude. All right, let's end the stream off. All right, thank you, everyone, for coming to Office Hours today. Appreciate um, all the questions we had asked. I had some fun times going through DiffyQ, relearning the... What was it? The integrating factors method? That was pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, appreciate that. Always come by. If, if you're taking summer classes and you need help with your um, your courses, come on by. We're, we're free to help. Um, <laughs> Laz always spamming the, the things. <laughs> Nightbot hates spamming emojis. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
But anyways, yeah. Uh, again, go uh, check out our other awesome mass streamer friends. They're streaming all throughout the week. So if you're ever, you know, online and looking for something to do on Twitch and learn, go check those guys out. They're really awesome. And then they also have some courses happening this summer. We got Diffie Q, Complex Analysis, and e &M. So we're going to go raid Penn Center right now for Complex. He just, he started at 30 minutes early. Um, but... So, it, likes, it, likes, it likes your amount of emojis, yeah. Our next stream will be tomorrow. So that's going to be an hour later. That's going to be Wednesday, 5, 5 p.m., um, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. So come on by. It's the last stream of the week. I'm working on getting uh, guests for Golden Hour. I need to uh, send some more emails out to people. I think a lot of people are just out over the summer, so they don't really want to like do stuff. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, but we're, we're still going to be here all summer helping out with, with questions and doing uh, SAT prep. Okay. Looks like Penn is online. We're going to go start raiding him. Yeah. Can complex analysis give insight into the complex problem of why I get no bitches? Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Ask, ask Penn Center. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Awesome. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, guys. We'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Go have some fun with Penn Center with Complex Analysis. Peace out. All right, peace sensation, dude. Good to see you, man. See you, man. Does show on the square root of five minus thirty?